This is the next video on how you can stay ahead of your competition by understanding the tools and strategies that your company need to know regarding trends. More specifically, e-commerce trends. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Google Ads, okay? So the keyword tool in Google Ads, that can be found at ads.google.com. The cost is free, so that's brilliant but you do need obviously a Google Ads account to get access to it. Now, remember with any online business, the first thing you should do is find out what people are searching for. And that's where Google Planner comes into its own. Google Planner will tell you how many people are searching for each keyword every month. And it shows you how that number has changed over time. So you can see whether a keyword is getting more or indeed less popular. Your business can then capitalize on this information if you do things in a smart manner. Now, the Keyword Planner also provides a competition level for each keyword, and this information can be used to help you choose the right keywords to focus your efforts on, and of course determine whether a particular keyword is worth targeting. The planner includes two useful features for finding relevant keywords, the Keyword Ideas Report and the Ad Group Ideas Report. The Keyword Ideas Report shows you a list of relevant and suggested keywords based on the seed keyword that you enter. And the Ad Group Ideas Report groups related keywords together so that you can create new ad groups more easily. Don't worry, I'm gonna take you through all of this. I just had to give you an insight into Google Ads Keyword Planner and just how amazing it would be if you use it in a smart way. So we're gonna, again, as part of this playlist, we're gonna talk use cases, and then obviously you can fit your particular use case into the suggested use cases that I give you. So use case one, see exactly how popular intent-based keywords truly are. Now, unless you're a very high ticket niche or you have zero competition, it's not necessarily worth going after keywords that have super low search volume. And Google's Keyword Planner will give you the exact search terms for your content month by month. And this will help you determine if it's a keyword, AKA a business or a niche that you might want to go after, okay? And what you do is you discover new keywords around a specific seed topic. Okay, so the first use case, we could look at exactly how popular intent-based keywords truly are. Unless you're in a very high ticket niche or you have zero competition, it's not necessarily worth going after keywords of super low search volume. And Google's Keyword Planner will give you the exact search terms for your content month by month. And this will help you determine if it's a keyword, AKA, I guess a business or a niche that you may want to go after. Okay, so let's now look at an example so we click discover new keywords obviously we've got the different uh, countries so in this example i'm going to change it to united states and i'm going to remove united kingdom so we get more search data right so uh, let me think of something super niche so let's say we're selling a yoga uh, clothing for i mean this is probably not that super niche but pregnant yoga women for pregnant or pregnancy maybe i should change that but let's see what it comes up with so this is interesting you can see the search pregnancy gym leggings pregnant yoga pants you can see the search volume in the states in america isn't that high for this particular search term so it gives you a really good idea that yeah in principle it sounds like an amazing product and i'm sure you could do well out of it but the actual search volume isn't that high for pregnancy, but let me just change it to monthly search volume and see if I am wrong. Well, I'm not whether I'm right or wrong, Google's telling us. So if you want to start a brand for pregnant yoga pants, you can see that the search volume really isn't there. And because it's more of a low ticket item, i.e. you'll probably be selling them for no more than $50 or 50 pounds, it's probably not necessarily worth your while and as you can see what you'd have to pay for a top high range bid is three pounds 17 per click 
you know, you'd have to have a very high conversion rate to pay three pounds a click, which is about five dollars, and 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 have a good return. So this is a really good example that if you were looking, you know what? Yeah, oh, it's a great idea. I saw these mums that were at a yoga class and they're pregnant, and they were talking about that they can't get yoga pregnancy um, uh, outfits. So I'm going to start a brand. Probably not the best idea because you can see the search volume yourself. So that's a good use case to see exactly how popular intent-based keywords truly are. Okay, so let's give another example now. So another use case is you can see keywords that your competitors are currently bidding or ranking on. So what you can do is you can actually see the keywords that your competitors are ranking for on Google Keywords Planner. And this is how you do it. Go to, so as if you're starting from fresh, Keyword Planner and then click on discover new keywords and then start with the website so let's put in https let's put in wayfair here you go use the entire site to get results so now google will show us a list of the top keywords that wayfair or you'd put in your competitor or competitors and then obviously you can create a google sheet and, and, and really have a, a wide diverse eclectic range of keywords and this is also a great way to come up with new keywords for your own website and if you're smart you create content around these keywords and then use uh, performance match campaigns um, or landing pages which is a, a, a another version of dsa ads uh, for another video anyway i diverse right let's have a look monthly search volume so we can see like rat and bar stools so this is a keyword that wayfair is going after so it might not show up particularly well, I'm going to put it in now because obviously I'm in the UK and I put the US, but if I put in that, oh, there you go, Wayfair. So this gives us loads of ideas on the sort of products and keywords that we could potentially go after. Bed frames, Wayfair, dresses, Wayfair, rat and dining chairs. Then what we could also do is we could have a filter. So let's say we want to look at products that we don't want to actually have the word Wayfair in because obviously looking for that brand. So you can put in keyword, does not contain, and we're gonna put in Wayfair. So now we can see exactly all the keywords, that, it doesn't matter that I've done that. Uh, have I spelled it right, Wayfair, uh, text match. We can see all the keywords now that they're basically ranking for that don't have their brand name in. And this is giving us an absolute goldmine treasure trove of data. Do you like that tip? That's a great use case. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So I alluded to this in the last tip, but there's a little, another little kind of tip trick I wanna show you, which is kind of similar, but slightly different, which is finding the most relevant keywords for your website or competitors. Now, this is gold. If you wanna see the most relevant terms for a specific page, okay, you can use the start with website option. So let me go there now. Keyword planner, discover new keywords, start with website. Okay, so we've done this before. Now let's say we're looking for a specific page. So let me actually go to wayfair.com and we're gonna to go to a category page. Let's go to rugs. You can't see the URL, okay? But I'm gonna go into comforters and sets and I'm gonna copy now that URL so when we put this into Google Keyword Plan, it's gonna tell us all the keywords that are pretty much ranking or they're bidding on for this particular product category. So let me put it in, get results. Let's wait for it to load, boom, oh, amazing. So it's basically telling you all the keywords for the, um, the different, uh, for this particular product page. So imagine you've got your own brand and you, let's say you sell comforters you've gone to all your competitors and you can get a data here now i am in the performance max campaign camp where google's going in terms of um, machine learning and less work for us to run ppc campaigns okay now here's a little trick there is something called dynamic search ads now, if you use that part as, your, as part of your PPC strategy, you'll be able to read Google's mind on what they think is going on with your website. So in the case of Wayfair, if I put on this domain, this URL, 
Google thinks that all these keywords are based on their website, on that page. And that's what they're gonna do for SEO. Um, that's what they think from an SEO perspective. So what you need to do is if you had a landing page and you put it in here and you look at these keywords of your landing page and, and you're thinking, but that's not relevant to my, um, my page or my website. Well, that's a clue. Google thinks it is. So you should update the content that you actually have on that product or lead page, whatever it may be. Okay. So this is, this is basically giving you an insight into Google's mind, which is a great strategy to use. Now, if you use this content, right, and then you do keyword clusters based around this, these keywords, and you write content based around these keywords, if you use DSA ads or performance max campaigns, that is a great way for Google to know exactly what the um, content that they need to be serving to people that are interested in your specific product or information. Really, really, really super powerful tip if you can get your head around it. By putting in any page into this tool, you will know what Google thinks your page is about. And sometimes you could be spot on or sometimes you could be, you know, completely off and wrong. Okay, do you want another little trick? So let's now look to see if your keyword is trending up or down. So once you add a C keyword in, there's a column which you can see, which I'm gonna add now, which is called three month change. Here we go. Oh, it's already on there. Here it is in this column, three month change. This is showing you a three month difference or change in search trends by comparing the last month's data or the latest month's data of the previous two months prior. So for example, if the month is July, the July data would be compared to May to show change in search volume over the three months. Okay, do you get that? So you can now see the upward or downward trend of your keywords or niche. Likewise, you can do this for year on year as well, which you can see in this column here. If you download this to a spreadsheet and do your and you know and do your analysis, you'll also again find a treasure trove. Maybe I'll do a video. Um, head over to uh, Hearts H A R T Z Brands B R A N D S dot com slash YouTube. Sign up to my email list, and I'll send you the vi uh, a video on how to do this in a Google Sheet. But you can see here, it's a really good example how bedding and comforters on the three month trend has gone down massively 90%. I really don't know why, I can't think of a reason why, but that is Google's data. So let's just click it, see what else is, has been up or down trending. But spring, obviously we're heading into spring comforter sets, boom, has gone up in the last three months by over 900% lightweight comforter queen why lightweight because we're heading into summer and obviously people want summer again this is a really good strategy to build your content around this is what you would do so let me look i want to give you another example because this is based around um uh, the comforter site on wayfair so let me give you an example of how i would do it so let me go to keyword planner let me type in double glazing okay let me just quickly see the results now we are obviously in the United States. Let me see if that's relevant. So if I go to the United States double glazing, and we do the three month change again, we can see that we've gone down 100% from the previous three months. So let me actually go to the UK because I feel that maybe we call it different, you know, we call it double glazing here in the United States, but in uh, this, the, sorry, in the UK, but in the United States, they may call it something else or you guys might call it something else so again here we go perfect misty windows up 900 percent so people are looking for misty windows i mean that could be trending up mr double glazing steamed up double glazing this replacing brown now obviously these are going up because maybe we're going into summer here and um, people are looking to replace their their double glazing but do misting double glazing so that'd be great for content there is just a treasure trove of information. We know that these are absolutely on fire. So I would literally create videos, articles, content on misty windows. 
um, and do keyword clusters to make sure that we rank for this because we know it's, it's going up massively. Do you want some more pro tricks for this? How about finding your competitors? Yep, all right, got you covered. So what you do, can you see you've got the refined keyword section? If you click on brand and no brand, you can see exactly who your competitors are who are advertising. So we've got, you know, if you're at Amersham Double Glazing, if it's more nation nationwide retailers here in the UK, you've got B&Q, Wix and Screwfix. You've got all the different brands. So you could do a lot of stuff here, okay? I mean, this is absolutely, oh, so much information. Do you want another pro tip? Yep. Do you want to know how to use Google Ads to find out what your target customer is asking so you can create content? Got you. Right, let me quickly head back so you can see it from the beginning. Click discover new keywords. Now, using the right words and adding them to the Google Keyword Planner, you can see what people are asking in relation to your product niche or idea. And this insight is golden. Now you find these insights by adding who, what, why, when, where, and how before any niche keyword. So let me give you an example in the uh, guitar niche okay so let me show you exactly what i mean so we're going to place in here who guitar comma oops where guitar what guitar I mean, that's probably a good one if you're in the guitar game you want to know what people are asking why guitar so if you're in the double glazing niche you do the same but replace double glazing when guitar finally how guitar so if you put this in here okay and then we're going to click get results so here we go look all these keyword ideas here how to play guitar how to learn guitar, how to play. Now, obviously, that is probably not an in, a, a commercial intent based keyword, obviously, unless you're selling a guitar course, right? But here you go, what uh, guitar should I buy? Well, do you know what? Let's actually add a filter. So keyword, so you can really dive in. And now let's put what, and you can do a text match or a semantic match. What guitar should I buy? What is the price of guitar? So you can see there are, I mean, they're not all obviously all intent based um, keywords, but it, it will give you an idea. But what you could also then do is keywords that contain rather than what, change it to buy. So you can get a list of purchase keywords. See what comes up. Where to buy a guitar, here we go. Where to buy guitar strings, what guitar should I buy? Where to buy a guitar, what electric guitar should I buy? So this is great, again, if you're creating content and then you can create keyword clusters among these, these keywords and then you can really get instant SEO with uh, Performance Max or DSA ads, whatever you wanna do. Is that a great tip? So that concludes today's lesson on how to use Google Keyword Planner to find trends and do market research. Honestly, it is a fantastic tool and one that really has to be in your arsenal. Now, should we go social next? Click on the video now on your screen and we're gonna look how you can use social media for trend analysis and find out some more trends today. See you there.